friends, hope you are well. No, I seriously hope that you are actually doing well. You see, with COVID-19, it's all been a bit scary. And in the year of our Lord 2020, it has been a pretty terrible start to it. So with that in mind, remember, if you are feeling ill, stay home, uh, watch some YouTube videos. Ah, I got you there. Play some video games or read a book. You know, just relax and well, get well. Don't be a dick and travel or go to events. But welcome to this week's episode of The Dirt Report. That's what you've come here for. So we have some great topics for you today. We have Facebook being sued again, Telstra staff to work from home, Optus being generous, and a chance of new voice services for rural Australians. So let's start with our favorite tracking application, Facebook. It seems like they just cannot get a break. If it's not their European Union suing them, then it's someone in the US with a class action lawsuit. Well, it's time for Australia to get into the action. So a few years back, uh, we had the Cambridge Analytical Scandal, and it's still not over. You see, this week, the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner has brought a civil case against Facebook in regards to the breach of the Australian privacy laws. This is actually the first time in history the OIAC has brought a civil suit against a company. And how much is the proposed fine, you may ask? Well, let's do some simple math. Let's start with the Australian Privacy Act. The provision for a fine in civil court is up to 1.7 million per person, uh, per person who is wronged. In the documents, the commissioner states that there were 311,074 Australian Facebook users in the mix of the 86 million profiles affected by the Cambridge Analytica scandal. So that times that, we are looking at around $539 billion for a fine. Some crazy amounts. Well, let's have a look at the statement from the office of the commissioner. I have also linked that below for your reading pleasure since you've got not much to do if you're in quarantine. And if you notice a smile on my face, it's because I am very happy to see Facebook get what they deserve. Now, the Australian Information Commission and Privacy Commissioner, Angela Falk, said, All entities operating in Australia must be transparent and accountable in the way they handle personal information in accordance with their obligation under the Australian privacy law. We consider the design of the Facebook platform meant that users were unable to exercise reasonable choice and control about how their personal information was disclosed. Facebook's default setting facilitated the disclosure of personal information, including sensitive information at the expense of privacy. We claim these actions left the person data of around 311,127 Australian Facebook users exposed to be sold and used for purposes, including political profiling well outside users' expectations. If you are aware of what the scandal is about, feel free to skip this next part. Uh, if not, stick around. This is what Facebook is being sued for. You see, Facebook disclosed personal information of Australian individuals who are friends of other people who installed an app called This Is Your Digital Life. Those affected did not install the This Is Your Digital Life app, their Facebook friends did, you see. And unless those individuals undertook a complex process of modifying their settings on Facebook, their personal information was disclosed by Facebook to the This Is Your Digital Life app by default. Facebook did not adequately inform the affected Australian individuals of the manner in which their personal information would be disclosed, or if it could be disclosed to an app installed by a friend, but not installed by that individual. Facebook failed to take responsible steps to protect these individuals' personal information from unauthorized disclosure. Facebook did not know the precise nature of extent of the personal information it disclosed to the This Is Your Life digital app, nor did it even prevent the app from disclosing to third parties the personal information then obtained. But the full extent of the information disclosed and to whom it was disclosed is unknown. What is known is that Facebook disclosed the affected Australian individual's personal information to the app whose developers sold personal information obtained using the app to the political consulting firm Cambridge Analytica in breach of Facebook policies. Well, as a result, the affected Australian individual's personal information was exposed to the risk of disclosure monetization and the use for political profiling purposes. So here we are today, Australia is suing Facebook for billions and we should not feel sorry 
for Facebook at all. Let me know in the comments below if you think you have been affected or if you are one of the people who actually affected the other person. Maybe the other person owes you a bit of cash after you get some moolah back from the government. So, Amid the COVID-19 virus outbreak, we get to step away from Hollywood and see how the real world actually responds to a pandemic. So far, it turns out we're all idiots, but nonetheless, we also get to see how employees are treated, how companies respond, and how our government responds. So, this week, Telstra has taken precautionary steps with their workforce. All travel and events over 25 people have been cancelled, and I'm sure this is the same for many other large corporations. But in regards to these topics, Telstra is a topic. So they have asked most of their workforce to work from home. However, not all employees can work from home. A fair sized group will have to stay on. Those who are essential to work on site or in the office to very specific cases. But in better news, earlier this week, they enacted a new global epidemic and pandemic leave policy, stating that there will be an added support of peace of mind for our people, whether they're permanent, fixed term or casual. A very, very good move from a large company that gets a lot of flack. Now, further to that, Telstra's Group Executive for Transformation, Communication and People, Alex Bodenek, said in a blog post on Friday, if a member of our team doesn't have sufficient sick leave to cover their absence or carer's leave to look after an affected family member, they'll now have access to additional paid leave. This policy provides up to 14 days of paid leave where a member of our team is required to quarantine or self-isolate and doesn't have sufficient or any carer's leave or whether they're caring for a child if their school or childcare is closed and unable to work from home. Telstra has put the right foot forward, both PR and for their people. This should also stave off economic risk for those in fear of losing their jobs at Telstra. Although this doesn't say what will happen in the coming months, at least you know you'll be safe if you actually fall sick. And most of the time, from what I've read, and please do not take this as medical advice, 70 to 80% of the cases are very mild, and those who are being affected and potentially at risk of death are those with very pre-existing medical issues. And I'm not gonna go further than that, but that's what I've read, and that's probably the most common thing that the WHO has come up with. And further to this, Optus has generously given their customers a big data boost for April. While it is a one-off, it should help those working from home to feel a little bit at ease in regards to pricing going up because they're gonna have to use a lot more of their data. Especially since the NBN is not particularly fast and some have very small data caps. And actually that in fact is a problem in itself as there are calls for other providers like NBN to follow suit and help mitigate the data usage of those soon to be working from home. Now, before I get into the statement uh, by CEO Kelly Bay Rosemarin, I just wanna put something to you guys. In the coming months, in the next 12 months, I believe there are gonna be a big surge in work people working from home. But what that actually might mean long-term is that people will continue to work from home because I believe those people who will be working from home will actually be quite efficient at their jobs because they're working from home from a comfortable space. And in fact, when it does come back to a point where people should start returning to work or can return to work, I believe many won't. And I believe there'll be a problem with offices and a lot of downsizing in that regard. Probably not job losses, but people work from home much more often. So back to what CEO Kelly Bayer Rosmerin said, these are unprecedented times and we want to help Australians who find themselves having to self-isolate or work from home to stay connected. We understand how much it means to customers to stay connected with their colleagues, classmates, family and friends. Access to data is critical, so we are playing our part in helping the community with our additional data offer. So eligible postpaid mobile customers will receive a one-off add-on of 20 gigabytes of data during April 2020. There could be some good news for rural Australians. First off, the government is looking to ditch their contract with Telstra, which doesn't actually sound very good, who at this stage provides and services the voice lines for rural communities. The trials aim to demonstrate and assess the effectiveness of new ways to deliver voice services in rural and remote Australia, potentially to increase choice for consumers in those areas. Under the trial, it is expected that end customers will pay to keep their existing Telstra services and then be supplied a free trial service with all their calls routed to this trial service. The trials will be conducted as part of the 220 million stronger regional digital connectivity package announced in March 2019. The package was key outcome from the 2018 regional communication review. 
And finally, July this year, the trials will start. However, there is a large list of requirements that have been built over time from the previous USO system. Things like reliability, timely installations, repairs, special features like forwarding. From my point of view, these are minimum requirements for any communication service offering but here we are, there's going to be potentially some question in regards to telcos who can actually achieve all those things. You see, the telcos who have put their hat in the ring, and even NBN Co has come to the party. But in fact, the solution that NBN Co has suggested is using fixed wireless systems for these voice calls. And this comes with a lot of caveats. Here is what the NBN Co submission said. The voice needs to traverse 34,000 kilometers to the satellite in geostationary orbit around the equator and back again. Even traveling at the speed of light, this means a 125 millisecond delay. Now, NBN Co's informal testing for voice and video calls indicates a small delay that is almost imperceptible. You wouldn't be gaming on that service, but voice calls should be okay. Well, calling from one voice service over satellite to another satellite service means a double hop in satellite transmission and the delay is more noticeable. Not only that, satellite services have other reliability issues, such as periods of service interruptibility due to weather events, meaning high quality voice calls will be very, very problematic. Voice calling has been the most underfunded system with high quality video calls, voice calls from things like Facebook, even though they're listening. <laughs> They've been available through online platforms like Discord and other systems. There is a level of expectation that is coming from the public that is available everywhere else. Now, once the trial starts, we'll find out more and people will be able to test different services. And this is, like I mentioned, free of charge during this period. You just keep paying for what you had before. And until then, we won't really know much until something gets chosen by the government. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode and remember to stay safe out there and, well, wash your hands, friends. Come on, it's not that hard. I don't know why we keep reminding people. I think it should be a bit of a standard thing. In any case, if you like this video, then tap that like button. And if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. It really helps out this channel to be noticed and more people will see these news. Thanks for watching and bye.